Veterans are usually peacemakers. Okay, we are veterans are people that served in the United States military, either in the Army or the Navy or the Marines or the Coast Guard or the Air Force or I think that's it. That's it. So you guys wanted to know what branch of service I was in and why I chose that one, right? So I chose to be in the United States Army. I was in the United States Army from October 23rd, 1996 until January 1st of 2005. You and wonder why you joined the Navy. They take you in, they transport you to, to the installation where you're going to do all your training. They cut off most of your hair, they do dental work on you. It's quite late at night by the time you get, get through, and I'm not saying this to scare you out of it. It's just the way it is. They prepare you so that when you, the next morning, when you do get up, you're able to move forward. There's nothing to interfere with it, such as dental work, eyeglass work, haircuts, that type of stuff. So they just bring it in there, they put you in, and from the minute you get in there, you're total, totally supervised by the, usually what's the rank of a chief, and he stays there in the dorm with you, and you spend six weeks of training, intense military training plus the book learning. So it's very intense. It's at the time you get out of there, you really appreciate the fact that you finished the, the training. In cold, I was freezing, and I had took my duffel bag and put all those clothes in my duffel bag on me to try to keep warm. I almost froze it. That's how cold it was, and I was terrified because I could see out the door of the plane. And the wings were rattling like that. Oh, it was bad. But we made it. In water, you have two things right here, or four actually. You got two in front of you and two behind you, and they're called slips. And if you pull one way, you'll you'll turn that way. And so you try to turn and not land in water because it's hard to swim with all that gear. And when you land on regular ground, you do a special landing called a PLF or a parachute landing fall and they teach you for about two weeks how to do that you land with your feet first and then you fall to your knees and then your butt and then you roll onto your back because that way it doesn't hurt when you fall boot camp is a very changed world it's basically like you guys are in school you come out a totally a different life we were country boys right here in Craig, colorado we went down to san diego california we went into a place they called receiving. And they told us what to wear, what to do, when to eat, what to do, everything. And they give us their own clothing. So it was a totally a different world. It was, it was like changed everything in your whole life for me. But to start off, my father was a Marine in World War One, That's a long time ago, almost a hundred years ago. And I had a brother, James, who was a Marine in World War Two. That happened back in the 1940s. I had another brother, Robert. He was in the Air Force then. And then another brother who was in the Korean War, which was in the 50s. And I'm a veteran of the Korean War. I came later after he did. So, anyway, my life started at Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. And I belonged to a reserve unit prior to that. In World War I, they fought in trenches. They dug a deep trench, and they all were in a trench, and then right across, and the trenches weren't usually very far away. They were like from here to the window, or a little farther. That's where the Germans would be in a trench over there, just a little ways away. You know what would happen if you'd stick your head up over the edge of the trench? It'd get shot off. If you stuck your head up over above the trench to look over there, the Germans would shoot your head off. So they pass these out to all the soldiers, and it's a real cheap made thing. It's just a wooden, uh, it's a wooden periscope. And you look through it down here, and you can stick it up above the trench and see what the Germans are doing. I walked out on the deck the next morning, real early. I 
I got up real early and I went out on the deck and I looked around and what a feeling I had in every direction for miles as far as I could see. There was aircraft carriers, submarines, um, cargo ships, destroyers, okay? You name it, uh, they were there. Destroyers, they were all there. And I just stood there in awe, looking around. But, oh my word, that's the whole 6th Fleet. And we don't know where we're going. They haven't told us yet. We're going into the seas and the ship's going up and down like this. Um, I would I would like this going back and forth a lot better than the up and down stuff. Uh, but you had to be careful going down the ladders or the stairwells uh, in the ship uh, because the there were there were times that the seas were so high that uh, and I happened to have been up on the bridge, which are one of the few places that there are actually windows. Uh, that when the ship was heeled over one direction, and I looked out to one side of the ship, all I saw was blue sky, and look out the other direction, all you see is green water. Um, an aircraft carrier is the deck of an aircraft carrier is five stories tall, and I've seen an aircraft carrier take green water over the bow, which means that that thing went down into the ocean and the wave hit it and it went over the deck. And there were plenty of times I saw that on my ship where the, the, the water would come back and they would actually tell you you can't go on deck because there was a chance that you could get swept overboard. The Army is usually the guys, when you hear on the news, they talk about boots on the ground. That's the Army. Those are Army guys we're talking about. Now, when uh, I was in, uh, I went, served in the Vietnam War, and I was uh, drafted in uh, 1968. We got out of there, and the guys saved food for us, and we had it in something, I don't know what they had it in the hill, we had it in. But anyway, we got in that Daniel River that night, uh, we took, uh, we were, after we got out of the town, or, yeah, people were out walking around, you know, and talking, and couldn't understand them. We couldn't, anyway, we uh, saw some logs, you know, and so we pulled these logs, and hell, we were pulling the roof off the guy's dugout. <laughs> And we heard him hollering and everything, and we took off then and got, we got a couple of three logs that we figured we got to have something to help us get across that damn Danube, you know. And we got in the river, and we'd wade for a while, and then pretty soon we couldn't hit bottom, we'd swim for a bit. We'd take it, we'd bundle it all closed up. And finally, we did this for a long time that night. And I mean, we were tired and everything. I know my dad, my folks had given me a wristwatch for graduation from high school. And I was so damn cold when I crawled up in that tree, I dropped that watch and still over there. Actually, being in combat numbers. Uh, while I was in the unit, we had two men that were killed as a result of combat. And when the, I don't know if you guys have heard about the movie Vietnam Wall, it's a replica of the actual Vietnam Wall. It has been in Craig, and I went and looked up those two guys' names on that wall. One of these days I do want to get back to Washington, D.C. and see the real thing.